Okay. Hey, welcome back for another Keeper Talks with Kiki. This is episode eight, and we're gonna be doing some cool stuff today, talking about um, opossums and talking about groundhogs. So thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I had some really like cute and cool questions this round, so let's dive in. So first, um, somebody asked about groundhogs. We're gonna talk about them first. Are they nocturnal? So they're not actually nocturnal. Um, you might think that they would be because most rodents like Rats and mice are going to be nocturnal animals, but they're not nocturnal, they're diurnal. So they're awake during the day and then they sleep during the nighttime like we do. They do hibernate, hibernate about um, October to I think March or April is when their hibernation time ends. Um, they like to eat grasses and clover and flowers and they'll actually eat garden veggies and fruits and apples and stuff like that if they can find it. Um, but most of the time they're gonna stick to grasses and they have to chew constantly because their teeth are constantly growing. So if they don't chew all the time, their teeth are gonna grow way too long and it's gonna hurt them. So they're constantly gnawing on things. They have perfectly round ears because of their digging. So if you've ever seen a groundhog, you've probably seen it pop out of a burrow or pop out of a hole that it's dug. And so the reason why its ears are perfectly round like that is because the ears will actually block the ear canals when they're digging in the dirt. So it keeps dirt from getting into their ears, which would be really bad for them. And their dens get uh, about 15 to 25 feet long underground. They're normally two to four feet underground and they have about a six to eight inch wide hole at the entrance. So that's pretty crazy. And then they actually have two to five different entrances within one given area. And then somebody asks, what purpose do they serve in the ecosystem? So one thing is keeping grasses and everything from overgrowing, but another thing is their holes actually provide shelter for foxes, raccoons, rabbits, skunks. So there are lots of animals that benefit from having these burrows already dug that they can get into to seek shelter when they need it. They are pretty similar to beavers. If you look at them, they look really similar to beavers except for they don't have that long tail in the back like a beaver does, um, but they're more closely related to other marmots like prairie dogs. Um, prairie dogs look very similar to groundhogs. They're just much smaller, um, a little bit more vocal too. Um, so prairie dogs are very similar and they're more what we call gophers. And then groundhogs are woodchucks are what I'm talking about today. And those are what you might see in Georgia. Now the groundhogs are closely related to beavers and squirrels, but they're kind of a little bit to the side. So not super closely related. They got their name actually from a Cree uh, Indian name for them, which was Woochuck, so Woodchuck. And then they also, the early settlers used to refer to them as Chucks, which was kind of a slang for hogs or pigs. And then that's where groundhog comes from. They kind of look like a little hog when they're moving around the ground. And then a fun fact about them is that they're actually really good at climbing trees. So you wouldn't think that, and I couldn't find a video of them climbing a tree, which I'm so sad about, but they're actually really good at climbing trees and they'll do that if there's an apple tree that's got apples growing on it, they might climb up that tree to go get to that fruit, which is crazy because they're so chubby. You wouldn't think that they could, but they absolutely can. Okay, let's talk about opossums. Y'all must really love opossums because I did a fact Friday about them on my Instagram page, which if you haven't checked that out, I'll post it on my story. But I did a fact Friday post where I posted a bunch of facts about opossums. And then I also did an episode of Fast Fact Fridays with Zoo Atlanta, where I talked about opossums, um, one of the actual uh, ambassador animals at the zoo. So I've given you all a lot of facts, but let's do some more. Um, they can play dead from 40 minutes to four hours. So when they play dead, it's actually involuntary. So they get so scared that they get so stressed out and shocked that they pass out. So it's not like they're thinking, oh, I'm just gonna play dead and I'm gonna fool this guy. They're like literally overwhelmed. They're like checking out for 40 minutes to four hours. Hope that threat is gone by the time I wake up. If not, I'm not gonna be awake for it. So pretty weird, but it works for them and they actually sometimes will defecate on themselves to 
be a more convincing version of a dead possum. So um, they sleep all day long and then they wake up at nighttime and that's when they forage and move around and mate. And that's why we often see them when we're driving around at night. Um, they're not gonna attack you. Um, they are pretty much harmless. So an opossum, if you corner it and you're coming up on it and you're trying to pick it up, if you were an opossum, you would think you were about to die. So you might, as a last resort, bare your teeth and then if the hand reaches close to you, try to bite it. But an opossum is not gonna come after you. Opossum isn't gonna be rabid. They're naturally immune to rabies because their body temperature is too low to incubate the disease. So you don't have to worry about a uh, opossum running up on you because it's rabid. It's not gonna be rabid. And if it hears you coming, it's gonna get out of the way because it doesn't wanna deal with you. And you might actually scare the opossum to the point where it has a play dead episode. So they're not gonna hurt you. Um, they don't come in different colors, at least the Virginia opossum that I'm featuring. Possums are another type of animal mainly found throughout Australia and like New Guinea, I believe. They come in some different colorations, but Virginia opossums are pretty much always blackish, grayish, and they have white and pink noses. And then in one year, they'll reproduce two times. The female is only pregnant for 12 to 13 days, and that at that point, she gives birth to her young. Now, the baby opossums are the size of a jelly bean at this point when they're born, and that's because she's a marsupial. So she has a pouch on her belly like a kangaroo or like a koala, and that baby opossum or all those little baby opossums are going to climb up into that pouch and they're going to get in there and they're going to suckle from their mom and then they're going to grow in there. She can have up to 20 young at a time, but normally only around like seven to nine are going to actually survive and some might not even make it to the pouch. Um, an interesting thing with them is that Somebody mentioned in the question submissions that they had to fed a baby opossum one time. Now that's interesting because when you think about uh, feeding like a baby squirrel or feeding a baby rabbit, you'll normally see a wildlife rehabilitator with like a baby bottle and they've got the animal suckling from it. But opossums don't suckle like most animals do. Since they are marsupials, they have an underdeveloped digestive tract as young. And when they climb into their mother's pouch and they latch onto a nipple, it actually will extend to almost like a tube feeding thing. And that will go down into their stomach. So they're basically being tube fed while they're growing up. So that's why you have to mimic that if you have orphaned opossums. Don't try to take care of them by yourself. Take them to a wildlife rehabilitator. Um, Let's see, people do tend to hate them a lot. Possums get a lot of flack. Opossums get a lot of flack. It's not fair, they're pretty awesome. Let me tell you why they are awesome, why they are amazing. They can eat 5,000 ticks in one season, amen. Okay, and then second of all, they like to eat slugs and they like to eat snails, which you can find in your garden, which will destroy your garden. The opossums, they don't really wanna eat all your fruits and veggies. They'd much rather uh, crunch down on a slug or a snail. So these guys are your friends. And the reason why people don't like them lots of times is because they think they're like ugly or they're like, oh, they have a bald tail. What's that about? Well, the reason why their tail is bald is actually because it's a prehensile tail. So their tail, they use it to grip onto branches. So their tail is almost like another limb that can hold onto branches. It can scoop up leaves and that kind of stuff so they can actually move their tail how they want to. Um, so if it was covered with fur, it would have a lot less grip when trying to grip onto branches and things. So that's why it's bald is because they use it. It's like another hand. You wouldn't want your hand all covered with mittens. Like that doesn't make sense. And then, you would never want to cut an opossum's whiskers. So that was a question I had to actually rely on that, especially since they're nocturnal. So if you think about a house cat, you would never want to trim, trim its whiskers because that is essentially its GPS system. So if you trim off a cat's whiskers or an opossum's whiskers, you have severely disoriented them because they use it for seeking how big the space that they're in is in. So they can, a cat can go up to a box and think, am I gonna be able to fit into this? And it can figure that out with its whiskers. An opossum might use its whiskers to judge, can I make that jump? Can I fit into that hole? And so if you get rid of their whiskers, they're not gonna be able to move around at night like they would be able to otherwise. So their whiskers are super essential and they use that for sensing their environment. 
And then a fun fact about them, which is kind of a sad fact, is that they have a super short lifespan. They are sexually mature at like six to eight months, and then they live one to two years. So sad. I love them. I want them to live forever. So one last message for you guys. If you are out and you're driving and you see an opossum, I don't think I have time to fit that in there. Thanks for joining for Keeper Talks with Kiki.